Welcome to Mr. B's Auto Shop. Today we're going to be covering doing an oil change. We are using a 2015 Toyota Tacoma 4.0. Even though some areas of this oil change will be different, most of the steps are very similar and can be used on all cars. The only difference would be the filter location or the drain plug location. When you do an oil change, the first thing you always want to do is remove the oil fill cap. The oil fill cap will either have the oil level or the oil type on it. So it may say SAE 520. Typically it's going to be yellow in color, the labels, but some cars like this one use just white writing on them. If the engine's a transverse engine, the engine may be on this side or that side. By removing the oil fill cap, we then are able to locate where the drain plug will be. We want to make sure you take the drain plug out of the correct part, not the transmission. Otherwise, you end up draining the transmission oil. And then that's going to be a bad day because you don't have, you didn't buy transmission oil. So we're going to go ahead and remove the cap. And we're going to set it somewhere where we'll notice it so we remember to put it back on. Once we have the cap removed and we now know which side of the engine bay the engine is located on, we will now raise the vehicle. Before we remove the drain plug, we want to make sure that we have all of the materials that we need. We're going to need the correct amount of oil and the correct type of oil. We're going to need an oil filter. We're going to need some type of oil filter tool to remove the filter. And we're going to need a drain pan or a drain bucket to drain the old oil in. Don't start the oil change without these, otherwise you're going to be walking to the parts store. So the first thing we have to do now is to find the oil drain plug. And on this vehicle, it is located at this point inside of the cover. And we are going to go ahead and remove the drain plug bolt. Once we have the correct tools, go ahead and break the drain plug bolt free. Make sure it's not the transmission drain plug. Once I have it loose, I can go ahead and remove it with my fingers. Make sure that you put the drain bucket in a location that it's not going to make a mess. The oil will come out in a quick rush and it is typically warm. So it's a good idea to raise your elbow above your wrist so that the oil will run down your hand and not into your armpit. Hold on to the drain plug, we don't want to lose it. So we're going to go ahead and pull that thing out and then we're going to allow the oil to drain. While the oil is draining, it's a good idea to look at the oil uh, drain plug itself and we want to make sure that the threads are in good condition and that the heads are the head of it is in good condition and that it has a gasket and if you look at this one this one does not have a gasket on it which is a problem which will mean that the drain plug will leak so we'll make sure we put a new uh, gasket on it before we put it back together if you sit and wait for all the oil to drain out, you're gonna be here for like a week. So we just watch the oil. When it starts, the stream starts to break or become interrupted, then we consider it empty. So you can see that the oil is now dripping instead of running quickly. So we're gonna go ahead and wipe off the area and see, yeah, there is no drain plug whatsoever and there are no gasket. So we're gonna go get us a gasket. The Toyota takes an aluminum drain plug, so we are going to install a new drain plug washer or gasket on it, and then we're going to go ahead and thread it back in. Make sure you start it by hand and thread it in straight so we don't cross thread it. Now, it's important that that drain plug doesn't come loose. It's also important that, that we don't over tighten it and strip the bolts. So we want to go ahead and use a torque wrench. The torque for this particular vehicle is 30 foot-pounds. 
So we're going to go ahead and set up our torque wrench to read 30 foot pounds. All right. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and set the torque. This one's a digital one, so it's going to light up. And when it gets to that point, we know that we have torqued it correctly. Once we have the torque at the correct amount, we are going to want to wipe off the area to make sure we didn't leave any oil spill. Also, if you got any on the tray, make sure you wipe that off as well because it will drip in the customer's driveway or in your driveway and that's not going to make, well, whoever owns the driveway very happy. So next, the oil filters on the top in this car, so we're going to lower the vehicle. To remove the oil filter, we're going to need a oil filter wrench or pliers of some type. We're going to use the two-jaw version. The two-jaw version is pretty common. It's spring-loaded. So you're going to spread it over the top of the filter. Then when you let it go and turn the drive, it's going to tighten down on the filter, forcing it to be removed. Once you've selected the correct oil filter wrench, Go ahead and place it over the filter. Then you're gonna put your ratchet on and make sure you turn it in the loosened direction. And it's gonna clamp down on the filter and then it's gonna rotate the filter. Once we have it loose, we no longer need the tool and we can go ahead and spin the old filter off. It will leak a little bit, but we're gonna clean that up in a minute. And then when we remove it, Go ahead and hold it upside down and you will notice that we have a puddle of oil down in the reservoir of the oil filter so we're going to use basically a turkey baster and we are going to suck out that fluid now if the oil filter is on the bottom we will not have to do this step because of course gravity is going to cause all the extra oil to fall in our drain pan but anytime we have a filter located at the top that's going to uh, create this type of scenario and we will need to suck the fluid out so we're going to take our turkey baster and our old filter and i'm going to go ahead and suck the oil up and i'm going to put it in the old filter And it looks like one more would just about do it. Now, once I have that clean, I need to inspect the oil filter surface where the, the filter meets the adapter. So I'm gonna first spray it off. And then I'm going to wipe it down to make sure that there is not an O-ring stuck to it. Uh, if the O-ring sticks to it, it'll create a double gasket situation, and that's going to cause it to leak. And that could damage the engine if it, uh, all the oil leaks out of it. Make sure you take the rag and you go down into the valley of the oil filter adapter so we get all of the residual oil. That'll prevent it from leaking on the customer's driveway later. So we can see that the filter boss or the filter adapter is clean. There is no gasket on it. So our next step would be to compare the new filter to the old filter. Of course, if you are purchasing the same brand filter, you could always just look at the filter number. So this one is a 1348, and this one also is a 1348, so we know they're the same filter. If they're made by different manufacturers, they will have different numbers on them. So we're gonna take our finger and place it in the old one and mark how far it goes in the center hole. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the new one. If they both your finger goes to the same depth in both filters, then we know that center thread is the correct size. We then are going to compare the O-rings and make sure the O-rings are the same size as well. Once we've confirmed 
that the filter is the correct filter, make sure you drain the filter for 24 hours before you throw it in the trash if you're doing it at home. If you're working at a shop, we cannot throw them in the trash, so we have to drain them for 24 hours and then either put them in a bin for disposal or crush and dispose of them. So don't just throw them in the trash. We now are gonna put a little bit of oil around the O-ring. So you're just gonna take a drop of oil on your finger and you are going to lubricate the O-ring. This is gonna prevent it from sticking to the oil filter adapter. And then we will thread the new oil filter on. We're just gonna spin it on till it gently touches the bottom. And then we're gonna turn it three quarters of a turn by hand and that is the correct tightness. Do not put a wrench on it. Do not put a pair of pliers on it. Do not turn it more than three quarters of a turn uh, or you can cause damage. So there's a half a turn and three quarters. Wipe it all down and now we're ready to install our oil. When we add the oil, it's always best to use a funnel. That way you don't make a mess and look up the exact amount of oil that you need. This vehicle takes 4.8 quarts of oil. If you pour the oil like this, you're gonna make a mess. So make sure you always hold the oil container flat and never fill the funnel more than halfway. Otherwise it may tip over and create a mess. And a little bit of oil will go a long ways on the ground. So you spill a half a quart of oil, that's gonna take you a little while to clean up. So slow and steady is the name of the game. Make sure you're using the correct viscosity or grade of oil so that the, it will protect the engine at the, in the colder temperatures and protect the engine during operating conditions. All right, once I have poured the oil in, let it, the, the funnel drain down for a second or two, and then you're gonna take and put the funnel back in the oil container so that you don't make a mess. So I always put my hand underneath it, plug the hole, and then place it in the drain bucket or the fill bucket so that we don't spill oil all over the place or leave a trail of oil. Then take a rag, and if you spilled anything or that, go ahead and wipe around that area, and then reinstall the oil fill cap. When we work on cars at a shop, customer doesn't really know what we've done. So if we see that the oil cover is extremely dusty, once we've put the cap back on, just take a rag and give that a quick wipe off. Yes, it takes a minute to do, and no, it doesn't improve performance. But when the customer opens the hood of the car uh, to see if you did your job or not, they will be impressed that you took the time to clean off the engine cover. Next, we are going to start the car and see if there are any leaks underneath. So we're gonna let it run for about 30 seconds. This is gonna fill the oil filter to allow us to take a good level reading and it's gonna give us the time to check for a leak. We have no visual or no visible leaks, so we are going to check the oil level. So we need to locate the oil dipstick. Typically, the oil dipstick will be yellow in color. Sometimes that's not the case. Um, sometimes they're black, sometimes they're orange. In this case, it is yellow. So pull the dipstick out, wipe the dipstick, reinstall the dipstick and then we're going to pull it out and read it so we can see that the oil level is here we can see the full mark is up here so we're halfway between low 
and max. And so we're gonna add another half a quart. Remember, it's typically one quart between these two dots. So if we're down here, we'd add a quart. Here, we add a half a quart. Up here, don't add anything. Never overfill a, a oil system. It causes foaming, which can create engine damage. And in best case scenario, it would uh, cause you to use more fuel and more wear on the engine. So we're gonna go ahead and add a half a quart of oil. Remove the uh, oil fill cap again. Place the funnel in there and add whatever oil you may need. If you don't have to add oil, then well, you'd be done. All right, so there goes my half a quart. Let the funnel drain for a minute. Plug the hole of the funnel, put it into the fill bucket and then we're going to wipe off the area around the oil fill and reinstall the cap. Now we don't have to start the engine again to check the level the second time because the oil filter is already full so we're just going to check, check the oil. Full, wipe, reinsert, full and read and you can see now that we are right here at the top dot. So now that it's full, we have no leaks. We've got a new filter, we've got new oil in it. It's at the correct level. The last step is to reset the maintenance light or the oil change light inside of the vehicle. All right, so we're gonna reset the oil reminder indicator. So on Toyotas, you're going to go ahead and uh, turn the key on of course it'll make nice annoying noises once we have the key on we're going to push the reset button which is located right here and we are going to push it till the odometer reads trip a and then you're going to have to do use both hands so we are going to turn the key push on the button turn the key off then turn the key back on and hold the button for five seconds. While you do that, the little dash lights will flash and it will go back to the trip odometer. Then start the car and make sure you have no maintenance required light on. And that's how you reset the oil reminder light on a Toyota. So we have changed the oil, we've put in, installed a new filter, we've added about five quarts of oil, we've checked the oil level, we've looked for leaks, we have reset the oil maintenance reminder, so that completes doing an oil change. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.